What's going on Mopar fam? I hope everyone's having a fantastic time out there. I'm finally getting this video up guys. I've been terribly, terribly busy and it has just been crazy around here. But finally getting this video up. This is going to be the racing footage uh, for Moparty 2021 that we just came back from. This has a lot of racing content from Frostbite and from Mr. Haney, which is John Cope's Ford truck with the 392 Hemi swap. So everything in this video is basically both of us beating down both of our trucks and unfortunately both trucks ended up breaking during the event so stay tuned you'll see what's going on but uh but yeah we had fun uh weather wasn't the best this year we ended up getting rained out on sunday but we did make some passes and uh yeah we both broke our trucks also guys do me a favor hit that like button right now give the video a thumbs up Put a comment down there. It helps the video tremendously. It helps YouTube uh, try to promote my videos a little bit more, gets them moved around a little bit, and that will be much, much appreciated. So definitely thumbs up the video for me. At Mo Party, I decided to run two classes, which was absolutely nuts because I was going back and forth trying to do different things, and it was just super hectic trying to run and get you know all your practice and stuff in for two different classes. It was nuts. But we did this True Street quarter mile class, and we did the eighth mile pro class, which is what John Cope ran Mr. Haney in, is the eighth mile pro class. I did not get any practice runs in the pro class. All my practice runs was on the True Street class. I just didn't have time to go back and forth, not to mention, like I said, frostbite breaks down later on in the middle of the event. But anyways, that's pretty much what it is. So let's get to the video, let's check it out. Uh, the first one's coming up is going to be the practice runs for uh, myself with Frostbite and from John Cope with Mr. Haney. So first up, let's get it. This is uh, Frostbite basically right off the trailer. And keep in mind, this is with the new Holly High Ram Manifold on the truck. And I had no track data up until we got to Mo Party to actually test this thing out and see how the tune does and how the truck reacted and so forth and we actually ran into some issues truck was running really good it, the intake is pulling really super hard up top and i can't notice any difference down low honestly i feel like i didn't lose anything i feel like i've gained more than um than anything like i said i, I from the stock intake to this intake i can't tell any difference whatsoever on the power level coming out of the hole it feels pretty close to the same um, but the top end is holy moly to me feels a lot better that's for sure however with no practicing no data on it we ended up having some issues we ended up going pretty lean uh, the manifold was causing us to go pretty lean up top and long story short we pretty much just found out frostbite's maxed out on fuel we are just pretty much running out of fuel system trying to run the truck uh, under the amount of boost that we were running and shifting it out at 7,000 rpms on the factory pump keep in mind we are running meth injection so that's helping us out tremendously but we're pretty much just running out of fuel so i wasn't really able to max the truck out and keep things safe but with all that said it was all good in the hood literally so let's check out the first pass again this is right off the trailer um, I decided to try something different and I raised the uh, tire pressure up to 25 psi to see if we could hook on the first pass out of the hole and we had the two step set at I believe about 41 or 4200 rpm and it pretty much went up in smoke but let's check it out. So there you go. Like I said, it did not hook at all. We blew the tires up tremendously. Um, and then, you know, once, it got, once I kind of gathered it up, I kind of got back into it and I noticed, I pretty much knew then we were gonna be having some issues trying to tackle this thing uh, and get ready for the actual racing classes to start. 
um, as I got towards, you know, getting towards the top of these, some of these gear, gear changes, I was noticing my wide band was starting to scare me a little bit. So that's when uh, more fun and troubles arrived on the next passes coming up. But anyway, here's John Cope on his first practice run. And uh, it was pretty good. And he even pulled a tire off the ground. So let's check it out. Heck yeah, again guys, he was running the Pro 8th Mile class, that was his first pass pretty much off the trailer, and uh, with the new suspension and everything that he just put in the truck, and the truck did pretty good. Um, after watching some of the video, we thought maybe the back end was a little too soft, so um, I believe he went back and he tightened up the shocks a pretty good bit, and on his next pass, it did do a lot better. Um, as you've seen on that pass, it kind of looked like the back end, like he kind of popped the front end up and then the back end pretty much like almost bunny hopped. It just bounced a lot. So on his next pass, it did do a lot better after tightening up the shocks in the back end. It didn't bounce as much and it definitely hooked a lot better. But uh, hell yeah, here we go. We got Frostbite coming back up for pass number two to see if we can figure it out. So let's see what happens. Yeah, we had a dead hook on that one now what did what I changed on that was mainly tire pressure we went from the 25 psi that I thought would be smart to try out for the first time and I lowered it back down to 18 um, 18 psi got us a dead hook on that as you can see now also lowered the two step down a little bit I think I went down to 3800 on that launch so we ended up launching out a hole pretty fair Although I want to launch out of the hole a lot harder than that. So after the launch, I pretty much uh, rev out first gear pretty good. And second gear comes into play. We're getting in, we're getting close. You know, we're coming around like 55, 6,000 RPMs on, on second gear. And I'm noticing the wide band is going super, super lean. We're, we're starting to tap about 12, 12, 1. And uh, I was like, oh, wow, crap. So I went ahead and I pulled the shifter back. We did another gear change early and pretty much did that the remainder of that pass just to try to keep the AFR down and try to get some decent half good data and uh, we still ran a pretty pretty good decent number ran a 12-0 the DA this weekend pretty much stayed around like 2500 so um, you know wasn't super happy with that pass but I couldn't stay in it, so it was starting to get a little frustrating. I was like, all right, so I need to get some data, try to figure this out, see if there's, you know, can we max out any more fuel out of this thing, or are we going to be done? So anyway, hell yeah, let's go on to John Cope's next pass. This will be his second pass in the practice rounds uh, before the racing. And uh, like I said, he tightened up the shocks in the back of his truck and uh, made a little uh, other tweaks. He changed out his burnout a little bit, too. Um, he shortened his burnout a little bit, and that also seemed to help a little bit with his tires. Uh, it seemed like the shorter burnout was actually helping him, so I, I believe he shortened the burnout, tightened up the suspension in the back end, and uh, did a pretty good different, did a much better difference for sure. So let's check it out.
Heck yeah, man. I love watching that truck race. I was actually the one filming that one down there on the ground, and that truck sounds amazing when you're right there next to it. It's crazy. Ford truck, 392 Hemi. Um, it's all in a all factory crate motor. It has a small cam in it right now from Dr. Diff, and uh, that's it. Plus John's transmission, the 46RE with a trans, uh, the trans brake. And he don't have a two-step on it right now, so he was pretty much just floorboard matting it. Um, he was just holding the pedal down to the floorboard and pretty much maxing out the converter. And I think he was, I think he said he was able to, like, that thing would hold around five grand or so. So he was launching it pretty hard. And it was definitely popping them tires up. And as you can see, the back end actually did a lot better. It didn't bounce as much. I had a much better 60 foot out of the hole that time for sure. But he ended up running into some issues. He found out he was hearing some noise and the drive shaft was rubbing. And uh, he found out he had some other suspension issues as well and ended up having to do some welding. And uh, unfortunately that ended up putting him out uh, just for safety concerns. They got the, they got the rear end uh, re-welded where the brackets go to hold the ladder bars and stuff together. But every time he was making a pass, it was actually bending the material and the bracket so he just decided to hang it up it's not worth you know getting hurt crashing the truck or any of that crap so he pretty much put it to bed after that but the truck did really good just got to work some more kinks out of it just like any other race car in the world but heck yeah let's uh, see what frostbite's going to do on this next pass right here so this is going to be i believe my last practice pass before we start off uh with the racing so let's check it out good pass it kind of looked like the first one so what happened well I was really wanting to get this thing to launch out of the hole guys man I was really trying to get it to hook so I bumped up to two steps some more we kept the tire pressure about the same so honestly I really don't know what happened there I don't know if that was a track issue there was lots of cleaning going on between runs right there I ended up having to sit there for a second for them to mop up some stuff and as soon as i launched i believe the guy went back to mopping again so i, I don't know um especially after the last pass it looked like we had traction issues pretty much resolved and then we go do this and it it just blows it up again so i don't know wasn't very good um but this was the last practice run i got some data and we came up with a plan to try to run the truck um in the 12 second the 12 index class in the true street class so our goal was trying to run 12s try to run the lowest 12 we can and hopefully beat everybody else out that's running you know running in the 12 second bracket right there so obviously we were running out of fuel it was keeping me from being able to wind out the uh the motor all the way to 7000 so i was having to shift early and or even some sometimes sometimes i was having to basically just let out for a second and then get back into it um, if the AFR was scaring me enough So the game plan what we did we basically threw all the fuel to it that we could um, Pretty much like hung the injectors open <laughs> and gave it everything it could have and on top of that I did have a Larger meth nozzle with me um, so we put that meth nozzle in and we added pretty much pure meth i've been running like a 75 25 mix that i make myself with uh vp m1 and we ended up just just going pure meth in the tank with the larger nozzle and after this pass we started off with the the first uh run the first run of the actual race and 
to try this all out and it actually did let me run the truck out a little harder I was a I was actually able to make I want to say around 6500 shifts um, before it started to get a little scary and uh, first pass it ran a pretty good time actually it was faster than I was even thinking we were gonna run it all um, in the DA plus not being able to pull run the truck or plus not being able to run the motor all the way up to you know 7,000 7200 so we did pretty good but anyway let's check out this first pass see how we did and uh, I believe we were racing a, a charger right here First pass in the actual race for the quarter mile street, uh, true street class, we ran 11.8. Um, when I got the time, I was actually stoked. I was like, crap, we just ran 11.8. Although we're shooting for uh, 12.0s, that's fine. The way the rules work in this class is you run three passes and they're pretty much back to back. And not only that, you have to let the truck, we had to let all of our vehicles sit and idle in the staging lanes for 30 minutes straight. We couldn't turn them off, we couldn't pop the hoods, we couldn't even get out of our cars, we couldn't change anything, nobody outside the cars could touch the cars. Um, if any of that stuff, if any of them rules were broke, you were disqualified, you could not compete in the class. So keep in mind, this is right after a 30 minute idle in the staging lane, so all of these cars, including Frostbite, is absolutely heat soaked from sitting there. Um, and the other thing is, in these classes, you're pretty much racing yourself. You're not racing the guy next to you. You're racing yourself, literally. Um, reaction time doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter who actually crosses the finish line first at all. That does not matter at all. All that matters is your three passes and your average. So if you're trying to run 12 O's and you run, say, 11 8, uh, 12 1, and then like a 12 0 30 or something, and then your average comes out to, say, like 12 1, then that's your time for the bracket and as long as you have the lowest time in the bracket you win that class so that's how it works so the 11 8 we ran i was actually super stoked because i knew as we kept going the truck's going to keep getting more heat soaked it's going to probably get a little bit slower every pass and we should be able to have a really solid low 12 second number and uh the plan worked out pretty good until uh it didn't and frostbite began to uh throw a fit and she broke but Anyway, let's go check out pass number two. pass number two we come flying around that charger and uh if you could hear i had my my son filming on the big end of the track and we I actually let out i let out pretty early before the finish line um i felt like i was running way too fast um the way the truck kind of ran down the charger and we come flying by i just i was like man i, I feel like we're gonna run like another 11 8 so it kind of scared me and uh, I decided to let out and just kind of roll the rest of the track right there and, and hope for the best. Well, 
I probably should have stayed in it. We ended up running a 12-3. Not terrible, but I knew my next pass, I needed to just run it all out and let it eat, and, and uh, we should be pretty good. Should have a pretty low number between the first pass, the 11-8, and then now the 12-3. So as long as this last pass, we could do a solid, pretty low 12. I, I thought we had a really good chance of winning the class. Um, however, when I come around on the second pass to get my time slip, I could feel something with frostbite just didn't feel right. It it she it, it was feeling like like something was dragging or or something was hanging up. Like it, it just didn't. It was feeling weird. I, I really couldn't describe it. Um, it kind of just felt like something was wrong. I I, I don't know. I, I I I could feel it. My I could feel it. I could I could just feel it. My bones. I was like, man, something. Some don't feel right, but I don't know what it is. I can't get out and I can't look at it. I can't change anything. I can't pop the hood. I can't look at nothing. So I'm like, well, screw it. The truck's running. It's moving. Let's go send it. See what happens. So anyway, let's pull up to the burnout box for the last pass and let's see what went down. see from the time that was bad that was bad so as soon as I came out of the burnout box on the last pass right there I knew something was jacked up not good and uh, it was scaring me I was trying to decide after I came out of the burnout box I was like man I don't even know if I want to run the truck um, I had the guys right there that was operating the tree they were kind of looking at me like come on man hurry up get this thing up here and let's run I'm sitting here trying to make decisions like, man, should I send the truck down? Should I, should I not? Um, and I was like, screw it. We're just going to send it, man. Screw it. So last pass, let's see what happens. You know, I didn't want to just throw away the first two passes. I thought we were still in it, but uh, we weren't <laughs> by a long shot. We wasn't. So after I come out of the burnout box, the truck was just like stopped. I, I, it was like someone put the brakes on. And to get the truck to move, you could even hear me. I was having to really get in the gas pedal. And every time I'd let off, it was just like stopping. Um, man, I was like, ah, is my rear end locking up? Or is some of the transmission going down? Um, I have a brake problem? You know, I'm, I'm like, what the heck's going on with this thing? So anyway, on the fly, I'm like, screw it. We're just going to send it. So I pull up. I, I get the truck staged. You know, I was having a, a issue trying to get it to to roll up there half smoothly with it not wanting to roll uh, very well. So we do the same thing we did the last two passes. We we hit the uh, two-step trans brake. We're sitting there bouncing off the rev limiter and uh, let go of the button and I knew right then it felt like a turd. This is a big old frozen chunk of poopy. I mean, it felt like I was pulling a 30-foot camper behind the truck the whole way down the drag strip and it just it felt like a turd I was like man I don't know what's wrong with this truck but please just finish let me get to the finish line and and don't go stupid or anything like that let's just get to the end of this thing so we can be done and go look at the truck see what we broke so I get to the uh, ticket booth I get the time I see the time I'm like yeah we we didn't win this class by far bye 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 so I and obviously we did not someone someone ended up winning it with like a 12 uh, like a 12-1 or a 12-0, like 93 or something like that. Um, but congrats to that guy. He did well. Uh, his car worked great. And uh, anyway, so after we get our time slip, 
and I pulled the frostbite over to the trailer, popped the hood. Um, I'm still having issues, honestly. You know, a lot of you guys know, like a year ago, I ended up getting COVID, and I still am having some issues with being able to uh, smell some things. Sometimes I can smell pretty good, and sometimes I just still can't smell crap. And uh, so John Cope comes over there, and he's like, man, I smell brakes. And I'm like, do you? He's like, yeah, I smell some brakes. And uh, I'm like, yeah, something ain't right. The truck's not wanting to roll, so maybe that's it. And uh, so anyway, we grab a jack, and... We jack up the back tires because we're figuring, you know, it's probably the back tires because I don't have a line lock. I'm always, you know, foot braking it and the burnout and whatever. Um, so we've pretty much figured maybe the rear calipers are uh, jacked up on it or something. Well, we jacked the back up. Both tires roll pretty good. We're like, well, that ain't the problem. So I go over to the front uh, passenger tire, jack it up, and uh, I can't roll that tire to save my life. I grab it. I'm bear hugging it. And I mean, I cannot move it. I don't even know how the truck was moving it, but I guess with all the weight, power of the motor, it was actually forcing it to, to roll instead of it just locking up and skidding. It was rolling. Um, but man, that thing, I couldn't roll it, you know, physically. I just, I couldn't move it. I knew something was jacked up. Uh, we had a bearing or a caliper or something jacked up. So then I went over to the other side, jacked it up, checked it. Same thing. It wouldn't roll at all either. I'm like, damn, calipers must be stuck or something. Um, so I grabbed a wrench, I loosened the bleeder on both of them to see if uh, maybe that would free it up. It did not. It was still, still remained stuck. Tires would not move. So we tore it apart. We found this. Well, I'll be dipped in shit and rolling breadcrumbs. Yeah, that's, that's a complete garbage right there, right? Um, never in my life. Have I had two calipers stick and do that at the same time? I've had one do that before, uh, not on frostbite, but on other vehicles. But I've never had two go at the same time uh, the same way. I, I have no idea how that happened or how it happens or what happened. Uh, if you know, put a comment down there and tell me because me and John was trying to like juggle ideas off of our head and I don't know. Um, I mean, it's definitely not like I'm holding the brake down and going down the track the whole time. So I don't know the truck, you know, the truck has 150,000 miles on it. Uh, those are new brakes and rotors. However, the calipers are probably still the original ones on the truck. I, I, I don't know. You know, when I bought frostbite. It had 98,000 miles on it. So I really don't know what all was done to it, but the calipers took a dump. Um, it slowed us down tremendously, obviously. And it cost us that race, but it is what it is. It could have been worse. Um, so I sent my wife and my best friend down to the store. They picked up some calipers that uh, the local Advanced Auto had on the shelf, and we actually fixed the truck right there. Uh, within an hour, we had it all done, and it was back up and going again. Time for the pro class, the pro eighth mile class that I decided I was going to run in because John Cope was going to was running in it initially until his truck uh, decided to. Um, flake out on him and he had to take it off the track. That was the main reason I wanted to do the 8th mile pro class because I wanted, me and John was wanting to race each other a few times and we didn't, we wasn't able to make that happen uh, under the circumstances. It just couldn't happen. Um, and the reason he did the 8th mile pro was because he wanted to use his trans brake um, but he didn't want to go and do the whole idling thing and all that stuff. Um, he just, he just wanted to go and race and whatever and I get it. Um, I like running quarter mile, so does John, um, but that's why I decided to do both classes because I wanted to do both. I wanted to do the quarter mile, and uh, the quarter mile would let you do the trans brake in the True Street class, and the only other class that would let you do uh, trans brake was the pro, uh, the pro eighth mile classes, I believe. That's why John went that way as well. Um, so anyway, we get the truck fixed literally barely in time for the pro classes to start racing and i mean i i pr i almost missed it um i literally by like three more minutes and i would not been able to make my first pass and i wouldn't have been able to run in that class
this was basically a bracket race where, you know, reaction time matters a lot. Um, the number you dial in to, you know, that you think you're going to run matters a lot. And obviously, you know, um, winning or losing the, you know, it's not really a big deal if you win or lose, I guess, the race too much. It's more on your dial in time and your reaction time. Um, I'm still new to the whole bracket race thing. And obviously, I, and honestly, I still suck at it because um, I don't bracket race that much, but we're trying to get there. So, looking at my time slips, I'm like, okay, I think we can do like 750s um, in the eighth. So, I ride on the window 750 for my dial in time. I pull up there just barely in time, like I said, to, to, to make a pass. And uh, the truck did good. It, I mean, it, <laughs> Frostbite literally almost ran exactly what I was trying to run. I think it ran 720 or 725. Um, so we did good there. We actually ran much closer to our dial in time than the guy that I raced. Um, however, he still won uh, because his reaction time was tremendously better than mine. Um, so he still won based off of the, how that math breaks down. And again, it's, it's kind of confusing. Um, but he still won, so that kicked me out on the first round which sucks but hey at least <laughs> i'm just happy we fixed the truck we was able to at least try to run in that class and we made one pass the truck did good it didn't break um but it is what it is and that was it for mo party as far as racing goes for frostbite and then uh right after that that was pretty much it rain started to move in and it washed everything out the rest of the night and uh, Sunday was pretty much a, a, a done deal. All the vendors was leaving and that pretty much killed Mo Party for sure. However, we had a blast. I got to hang out with John for a little while. I uh, got to meet some of John's buddies up there that was racing as well. Uh, I seen a couple, ended up meeting a few followers up there that seen me at the Torque Storm booth, so that was cool. Also ran into uh, Boosted Motorsports. Had the Hell Coda at the track, and uh, which I've already posted a lot of those videos. He did the burnout contest as well. Um, the, that Dakota is awesome. That's for sure. And, uh, we had a good time, um, until the rain came in. Other than that, guys, that does it for the video. As always, stay safe out there and we'll see you on the next one.